Sometimes PC builds are tuned for pure performance. Other times, it's all about the aesthetics. This one is a little bit of both. Don't get me wrong, this $900 gaming PC is still crazy powerful and can play close to every game at 1080p higher ultra settings. But at the same time, I did spend some of the budget to create this pretty unique color scheme and shockingly enough, I actually like it. Today's video will walk you through all the parts I chose and then we'll benchmark the performance to see exactly what it's capable of. And in case you do wanna copy this entire entire thing for yourself or even just pick and pull little parts of it, I'm gonna make this as easy as possible. I have a cheat sheet linked down below that includes alternative parts, a cable management guide, and a whole lot more. We also have the full PC building step-by-step -step video and even a full benchmarking video. And real quickly, if you're new here, my name is Zach and I make videos like this to help you whether you wanna start in PC building or even just PC gaming. I've built my business to support you if you wanna copy build templates like this. I have a ton of free PC building resources on my website and we even sell pre-built on zttbuilds.com. I'm not here to push you one way or another, just showing you some cool options depending on which route you wanna take. So let's check this one out. All right, starting at the top of the parts list, we're actually doing something that I've never done before. This is the Ryzen 5 7500F, which I have in fact used dozens of times on this channel, but I never bought one of these just from Newegg. I don't know why, but I was under the impression that you could only buy these from over in China on AliExpress, which I don't mind doing as long as there's no crazy tariffs. But yeah, these are also just sitting over on Newegg. I honestly had no idea that these were here, but for 150 bucks, you can get the standard two or three day shipping, which is much better than the two to three week shipping from AliExpress. It'll still only arrive with the plastic tray and no box or cooler, but that's still incredibly valuable because it's the cheapest way to get on AM5. I'll have a link to where you can grab one of these for yourself down in the description. Next up, we have the motherboard, and this is the ASUS B650E Max Gaming Wi-Fi. To be completely honest with you, the only reason I got this one is because it was the cheapest available all-white B650. If you don't need an all-white one, then you could save a little bit of money here, but at the $150 I paid, it doesn't get a whole lot cheaper. And as the name suggests, this is actually a B650E, and that E stands for extreme, and I don't really use these that often. This indicates that the motherboard has PCIe Gen 5 support for not just the M.2 SSD, but also the GPU slot. Like I said, that was not an intentional choice and you definitely don't need an extreme motherboard for this type of system. That cheat sheet in the description will have several other models to choose from. And if you haven't used one of my cheat sheets before, any alternative part that's listed there can be easily swapped out without any sort of disclaimer. So feel free to use any of those options that are listed. Next up, we have the RAM and this is the Silicon Power Zenith 2x16 gigabyte DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30. Just like the motherboard, this was simply the cheap cheapest all white kit that I could find. I of course specifically looked for a 6,000 megahertz kit with the CL Radium 30 and I recommend you do the same, but other than that, feel free to go with whichever brand or model kit that you can find a good deal on. Ones with gold RGB potential probably would have looked even better though. Next up we have the SSD and after taking just a one or two video break, we're back to using the Clevcraft C910. This is a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 model and we're finally starting to see some more competition below this $60 price range. Remember that between this the Silicon Power UD90, or some of the alternatives, these are all on the more budget tier of NVMEs, but they all have relatively the same performance and reliability, and this is where you can save some decent money for budget builds, as opposed to going with a more typical, expensive Samsung or whatever other big brand drive. To polish off this motherboard prep, we'll need a cooling solution for the 7500F, because remember, it will not come with one, and I'll admit this is the most overkill option, and definitely not a choice I recommend if your goal is getting the absolute highest FPS per dollar value. This is the Thermalrite Aqua Elite 360 ARGB all-in-one liquid cooler. And as most of you know, the 7500F doesn't need this or any AIO to keep it cool at all. I only went with this because I thought these three fans would kind of nicely fill out the top area of the case, but for only $52, it honestly doesn't cost a whole lot extra compared to an air cooler. If you are trying to save money, then I recommend the Thermalrite Assassin X SE RGB, which is always on Amazon for 20 bucks. Just to be clear, this is 100% an aesthetic choice and you do not need to copy this, but the great thing about PC building is we can do whatever we want. I just have a feeling that the price to performance snobs won't really like this choice. Parts like this look incredible and it actually gives you some future proofing because then we could upgrade to a 9800X3D if we wanted to and still be perfectly fine. But this is the reason why I don't call a build like this 
a pure performance build guide. Next up, let's start working on the power supply, and this is yet another MSI Mag A550BN. For the one millionth and one time, this is a 550 watt, 80 plus bronze, tier C non-modular unit. It's perfect for budget builds like this, and for some more aesthetic bonus points, which we certainly count here over at ZTT. His 11X aesthetics multiplier was multiplied by zero. That was the whole strategy, Linus. These are the Surlier white and gold cable extensions. These cost $23, and it's exactly what makes this white and gold color scheme stand out so much. I had no idea when buying these if I would actually like this color scheme because I've never used anything like them. But like I said in the intro, dare I say, this is actually a pretty cool color combination. These are 100% optional, and just like the AIO, this is purely an aesthetic choice that you do not need to copy, but dude, I think it looks pretty good. Now the case, on the other hand, actually works well no matter which type of build you're doing. This is the new Montec X5 White, and for $75, it's sitting in a pretty good spot. This is an ATX-sized, pretty clean design that comes with four pre-installed ARGB fans, so building with it is a breeze. The three fans up at the front are plenty enough for intake, and then the one in the back for exhaust creates a pretty good front-to-back setup. Now, I also have the three fans for the AIO up here at the top, and they're set to exhaust. This is, again, more of an aesthetic setup, but still perfectly fine, as we'll see in the temperature testing section here soon. One thing I love about this Montec X5, though, is the tiny amount of carbon fiber action here at the bottom on the front panel. I actually made a video all about this on the ZTT Extras channel, and by the way, if you aren't subscribed over there, we release a ton of bonus content, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss out on those videos. I'm not trying to be over dramatic here, but I feel like if more people like us start talking talking about carbon fiber, this should end up being a pretty big case trend. You would think that we'd already have a lot of these options, but this is just the first one that I've personally seen and or can remember. I think this looks super clean and I wish the entire front panel had this design. Plus, if you're in the car scene, you'll know that carbon fiber is similar to RGB where it just instantly boosts your FPS numbers. I'll prove that's true in the benchmarking section, but let's first go over the one final component. This is the Intel Arc B580 and specifically the ASRock Steel Legend model. I am absolutely a self-identified sucker when it comes to the Steel Legend GPUs because GPU aesthetics don't get a whole lot better than this. The thing I love about this though is that it's actually FPS per dollar snob friendly as well. The B580 is one of the best FPS per dollar GPUs right now and this was sitting readily available on Newegg when I bought it for just $270. This is a 1080p high to ultra or even 1440p GPU depending on your game selection and preferences. I wouldn't say that the B580 is 100% PC beginner or PC rookie friendly just yet, but Intel has come a long way in the last couple of years. Our benchmarker Sam did say that he ran into a couple quirky issues with the drivers, so it's not quite as stable as AMD GPU drivers right now. But if you know your way around troubleshooting issues, or if you're not playing older titles that may not have perfect Intel support, this is still a really good GPU. I also love that it just avoids the 8GB VRAM dilemma entirely. Imagine if the 9060 XT or 5060 Ti didn't have two options and just went with 12 gigabytes like this one did. Wild concept. Rant aside, here's what the final parts list looks like, and at the time of making this video, my total came out to just $920. Again, this is not a pure performance build guide, and I was specifically trying out a new aesthetic color scheme, which does increase that total a bit. If you wanted a pure performance all black build at this performance level, you definitely could do that for around $850. You could save money on a cheaper case, use a $20 air cooler, or of course, not have cable extensions. Not every build has has to have the best FPS per dollar value, but on that topic, this one is still pretty good. Let's jump into some games now, and the first one we'll showcase is Cyberpunk 2077, and like I said in the intro, we could crank up the settings to 1080p Ultra and still got a very impressive 96 FPS average. That's without any sort of upscaling and just raw native horsepower. For a more competitive game where you want higher FPS and lower graphic fidelity, here's Fortnite, and in 1080p with Pro settings, we got 265 FPS. Now for the super demanding AAA games like Starfield or Black Myth Wukong, we got 60 and 86 FPS respectively, but we did have to drop down to 1080p medium, which still looks pretty good. Here are the rest of the games that we benchmarked, and if you want to see how all of these titles looked with longer gameplay clips, we uploaded a dedicated benchmarking video for this build over on the ZTT Extras channel. Most games hit around 1080p higher ultra settings, and a lot of people, including us in some builds, benchmarked the B580 at 1440p. Personally, I'm all about that smoother gameplay with the 100 plus FPS number, so I probably run this type of build in 1080p high to ultra, 
But if you're someone that just needs 60 FPS and you'd rather crank up the settings, then you absolutely can do that with a build like this. And in terms of temperatures, we absolutely had no problems because here's the B580 cranked to 100% GPU load in Assassin's Creed Shadows, and that temperature is staying right in the mid 50s. Here's Marvel Rivals, where both the CPU and GPU temperatures are very low as well. But I do want to point out that we had a crash that looked like this when playing this title. Again, the Intel drivers have come a long way in the last couple of years, and I'm personally still rooting for them, but it's just not quite beginner friendly, and you'll have to deal with little issues like this more than you would with AMD or Nvidia. Well, honestly, I probably should just say AMD right there because Nvidia drivers have had a ton of issues this past year, but that is content for a whole different video. Either way, this is my $900 white and gold gaming PC build guide. Be sure to check out that cheat sheet if you need some extra help copying it, and if you want to see how I put together a pure performance B580 build, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen right now.